Hey folks, in this video I am going to take a closer look at the Tour Arise from Bomb Track, a great touring bike ready to be taken on world expedition tours. As always, this video isn't sponsored in any way and these are my honest opinions. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and if you don't want to miss any other videos, you are most welcome to subscribe to my channel. So let's get started. The bomb truck tour arise costs around 2500 euros and so is in the mid price range for touring bikes and it is in my opinion worth its price. The frame is made out of double butted chromoly steel as is the fork and it is available in 5 different sizes. I will be talking about the medium size in this video and so some things will be different to the bigger or smaller builds. If you need another size be sure to check the geometry since it can't be changed throughout the different sizes. The bike comes in the color glossy navy blue and weighs 14.7 kilograms which isn't light but considering that they are already a front and a rear rack and fenders mounted to it, it is alright. And the weight isn't the most important since one wants to pack it with lots of stuff anyway and it's great for that being able to carry up to 130 kilograms including the rider. If you don't know that much about bike geometry, I will link some websites and videos below. This scale from Bike Insights shows how upright or aggressive the geometry of all the different sizes of the Tour Arise is, compared to similar sized bikes in the same category, so Touring. With a stack to reach value of 1.51, it puts one in a more upright position which is important when cycling many hours a day for days on end. The 90mm long stem with the minus 7 degree increases the reach but if that should be uncomfortable, one can just rotate the stem or change it completely. A longer stem feels more stable than a shorter one making the steering nice and smooth. The chain stays are 435mm long which is a bit shorter than compared to other touring bikes but one shouldn't have any problems with one's heels hitting one's panniers whilst pedaling and with a wheelbase of 1045 millimeters it is still rather long. The fork has a high trail of 68 millimeters with an offset of 55 also making the bike feel smooth and stable. The whole bike is built up to be relatively easy to work on. It has external cable routing except for the light cable which is routed internally so it stays protected. It uses a Holotech 2 bottom bracket. On its 1 1 8 non-tapered head tube it uses external cup bearings. The seat post is 27.2 mm in diameter and it uses through axles 12 by 100 in the front and 12 by 142 in the rear. The Arise 2 frame has plenty of eyelets to mount things. Two on the top tube, two on the seat tube, three on the top and two on the bottom of the down tube. It comes stock with mudguards and also with front and rear racks. But interestingly it does not have a kickstand mount as far as I can tell. The racks are from Tubos and I don't know any better brand. The rear rack is the Logo Evo which can officially hold 26 kilograms but is tested for 40 kilograms. And the front rack is the Tubos Tara which can hold up to 18 kilograms. So that's plenty enough, you can just throw lots of gear on there and it won't be a problem. The Arise uses a 42 cm wide aluminium drop bar with 10 degree flare. Drop bars are great because they offer many different hand positions which is important when you are riding so many hours. The size XS and S used 650B wheels and all bigger sizes 700C. It uses WTB rims and J-Bend spokes, 32 per wheel and with 3 spoke crossings the wheels are strong and reliable. In the front it uses a KT Dynamo hub and in the rear a hub from bomb truck themselves. I am a big fan of through axles because they make it more easy to quickly remove the wheels and put them back without them being installed incorrectly and also they add lateral stability.
I am a really big fan of the 2x10 drivetrain. Most often touring bikes have a 3x system, but I think 2x is the way to go. It uses micro drift parts, which I don't know too much about, but they should be fine. Although I would have liked it if the rear derailleur had a clutch in order to tighten the chain when needed. The shifters are micro drift bar and friction shifters, which have the big advantage over modern STI levers that if they break, one doesn't also break the brake levers and has to pay a fortune and they work with all sorts of different rear and front derailleurs so if it should happen that one has to replace parts of one's drivetrain they would still work. The front derailleur has two positions on each cog making it possible to use all 10 rear cogs with both front ones offering 20 gears which are plenty with an overall gear ratio of 585%. The smallest gear, so the one for going uphill, has a ratio of 0.7 which means that with one pedal stroke one will rotate the rear wheel by 70% which with the 40 by 622 tires translates to 19.7 gear inches or 1.57 meters of development which is a great climbing gear. The biggest gear, so the one for going uphill, has a ratio of 4.2 which means that with one pedal stroke one will rotate the rear wheel by 420% that translates to 115.4 gear inches or 9.21 meters of development which is plenty. The average jump is 16% which in my opinion is great. The brakes are TRP Spire C post mount mechanical disc brakes with Tektro drop bar levers. I prefer disc brakes over rim brakes since one doesn't break away the most important part, the wheels, and can change the brake rotors when they are worn down. Mechanical disc brakes wouldn't be the ones I choose since I prefer the self adjusting and better braking of their hydraulic cousins, but they will do their job, and for those who want to be able to take everything apart, they are better anyway since they work via cable and not with oil. The maximum rotor sizes both in the front and in the rear are 160mm but that is sufficient enough. What I also find great about the bike are the supernova lights. In the front it is using the supernova E3 Pure 3 which offers 70 lux and in the back it uses the E3 Taillight 2. With the front dynamo hub one just doesn't have to worry about any battery life or recharging time and many other touring bikes don't offer that out of the box. A unique feature of the frame is its ability to hold three spare spokes which is great because it is a pain trying to pack them in one's panniers. Overall I think the bike is great for its price. I would change a few things like the tires and the saddle but whenever one buys an already built up bike one changes a few things anyway. So if you are looking for a reliable touring bike without having to look for and order parts the bomb track to arise is a great choice. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you are interested in bicycle gear and bikes in general consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, enjoy your day with a nice ride and see you soon. Bye!